Hello and welcome to our video about mitosis. Before we start, we want to introduce ourselves. I'm Jenny. And I'm Lola. Our boss, Dr. Heusle, gave us the task of explaining mitosis of the human body cell to you. So what is mitosis? The term mitosis describes the division of the nucleus of a human body cell, also called somatic cell. Before this can happen, the genetic information located in the nucleus, has to be duplicated. I thought mitosis was the division of a cell. No. Many people think that, however, the term mitosis is restricted to the division of the cell's nucleus. If the cell divides after the division of its nucleus, this process is called cytokinesis. That's why many people get confused if they find out that mitosis only describes the nuclear division. After the division of the nucleus, mitosis, and after the division of the cell, cytokinesis, one finds two cells with identical genetic information. The two final cells are basically clones of the original mother cell. Let's talk about the cell cycle, the life cycle of the cell. The cell cycle can roughly be divided into an interphase and a mitotic phase. The interface can again be broken up into three sections. Gap phase 1, or G1 phase, S phase, S for DNA synthesis, and gap phase 2, or G2 phase. So what exactly happens in these phases? During G1 phase, the cell carries out its specific work, which is different for each cell type. For example, muscle cells have different work to do than brain cells. Furthermore, the cell synthesizes proteins. The cell grows in this stage as well. You said mitosis was about the cell's nucleus. What does the nucleus look like before mitosis, during G1 phase? Since I am such a talented artist, I prepared a very detailed sketch of a body cell's nucleus. Looks more like tangled wooden threads to me. Exactly, that's what I wanted to achieve. A human somatic cell contains a double set of chromosomes with a total of 46 chromosomes. One maternal set of chromosomes, made up of 23 chromosomes, and one paternal set of chromosomes, also made up of 23 chromosomes. In total, the cell's nucleus contains 46 chromosomes. In your brilliant sketch, I can see anything that looks like the chromosomes I know. I'm not surprised by that. During G1 phase, the genetic information is not yet present in the typical X shape that you are surely thinking of. So what does it look like? During G1 phase of interphase, the genetic information is contained in chromatin fibers. These chromatin fibers can be compared with woolen threads, like you already noticed earlier. Instead of 46 X-shaped chromosomes, we can see 46 woolen threads, which are all tangled together without any identifiable order. Ah, I see. So now we can finally move on to S phase. During S phase of interphase, the genetic information, the DNA, is duplicated. This process is called chromosome duplication. As a result, there are now 92 chromatin fibers in the nucleus instead of 46. In addition, the centrosome is duplicated. The centrosome will become the motor of mitosis later on. So mitosis can start now, can't it? Wait, not so fast. Before starting mitosis, the cell has to go through G2 phase. Or have you already forgotten about that? Oh, right. During G2 phase, the duplicated DNA is checked for damage. In addition, proteins that are important for mitosis are made. But now mitosis can start. Just like interphase, mitosis can also be divided into individual stages. The first one is prophase, followed by prometaphase, followed by metaphase, anaphase, and lastly, telophase. Why did you indent the word prometaphase like that? In some textbooks, prometaphase is not listed as an individual phase. The events of prometaphase are then included in prophase. I see. 
But what exactly happens during the different phases of mitosis? In prophase, the 92 chromatin fibers condense into 46 double-stranded chromosomes. Double what? And why 46 and not 92? Double-stranded chromosomes. These are the chromosomes that are shaped like an X. They consist of two sister chromatids. A chromatid is a tightly intertwined chromatin fiber. You can compare this to a loose woolen thread which is winded into a ball of wool. That is what happens to the chromatin fibers from the S phase. One chromatin fiber is coiled into one chromatid. This process is called chromosome condensation. A double-stranded chromosome consists of two such chromatids. One chromatid is the original one from G1 phase, the other chromatid is the identical copy from S phase. This means that the two sister chromatids of each double-stranded chromosome contain the identical genetic information. The sister chromatids are connected in the central mere. So that's the reason why there are 46 chromosomes and not 92. Who? that is really complicated. Yes, but if you understand it once, you will hopefully know forever. That's the plan. At the end of prophase, the nucleus looks something like this. In the human nucleus, there are of course not only 4 but 46 chromosomes. But you surely understand that we only drew 4 to keep it simple. Prometaphase is next. No. Well, theoretically you're right. But it would be best to explain the centrosome first. Here we have a simplified sketch of a centrosome. A centrosome consists of two cylindrical centrioles. The centrioles are arranged orthogonally. Without the two centrosomes, mitosis wouldn't work. We'll soon explain why. But first, let's go back to prometaphase. During prometaphase, the nuclear membrane starts to dissolve. What is more, the mitotic spindle is constructed. The mitotic spindle is made up of the two centrosomes and spindle fibers, which are also called microtubules. The microtubules spread from the centrosomes towards the middle of the cell. To truly understand mitosis, it's important to differentiate between three types of microtubules. All microtubules have their starting point in the centrioles of the centrosomes. The kinetochore microtubules bind to the centromeres of the chromosomes. The interpolar microtubules of the two centrosomes meet in the middle of the cell and overlap there. The astral microtubules bind to the inner cell membrane and thus position the mitotic spindle inside the cell. Back to mitosis. We'll continue with the metaphase. In prometaphase, the nuclear membrane was dissolved and the mitotic spindle began to develop. Now, in metaphase, the double-stranded chromosomes are aligned in the equatorial plane, the middle of the cell, with the help of the kinetochore microtubules. We can compare the cell to the globe. The cell's poles are the centrosomes and can be compared to Arctic and Antarctica. If we cut through the globe at the equator, the cut surface would be the equatorial plane of the cell. Next we'll talk about anaphase. Here things get violent. Why violent? Sisters are brutally separated from each other. Sisters? The sister chromatids of the double-stranded chromosomes. Ah, okay. You're right. During anaphase, the sister chromatids are separated. This is accomplished by the kinetochore microtubules, which shorten and thereby pull the chromatids to the particular centrosomes. The 46 double-stranded chromosomes become 92 single-stranded chromosomes. 46 of them are pulled to one side of the cell, the other 46 to the other side. Now the identical genetic information is existent on both sides of the cell. The interpolar microtubules and the astral microtubules 
elongate the cell and thereby move the separated chromatids further apart. Now we're almost done. The last phase of mitosis is called telophase. There are now 46 single-stranded chromosomes around each centrosome. Now the mitotic spindle begins to decompose. Nuclear membrane is developed around the chromosomes at the two cell poles. Finally, the chromosomes uncoil into their original state. They reorganize into chromatin fibers. We're now through with mitosis. But because the division of the cell's nucleus, mitosis, is usually followed by the division of the cell, we also want to explain this process to you. The process of cell division is called cytokinesis. The mitotic spindle is now almost totally gone and the cell begins to constrict at the equatorial plane. Two daughter cells with identical genetic information are created. The cell cycle can start again. Now we're going to put it all in a nutshell. First, we have a human body cell. In humans, the body cells are diploid. That means they have a double set of chromosomes. One paternal set of chromosomes, consisting of 23 chromosomes, and one maternal set of chromosomes, also consisting of 23 chromosomes. Depending on the phase of the cell cycle that the cell is in, the genetic information exists in form of chromatin fibers or chromatids. Why didn't we talk about diploid cells earlier? The term diploid is only important for our next video about meiosis. However, it's convenient to have already heard of it. You don't have to run away in despair if you don't quite understand it right now. We will cover this topic in more detail soon. The cell is now in G1 phase. It's growing, synthesizing proteins and doing its specific work. The S phase follows the G1 phase. Here, the entire genetic information, the DNA, is duplicated. Now, every chromatin fiber has an identical copy. It is still considered a diploid set of chromosomes. Later on, the original chromatin fiber and its copy will condense to a double-stranded chromosome. In the sketch, we drew the DNA as double-stranded chromosomes and not as chromatin fibers, so it's easier to understand. This typical X shape can be observed at the beginning of mitosis. Now onto the G2 phase. During this phase, the duplicated DNA is checked for damage and more important proteins are made. Now the mitosis can begin. We'll now show you all the graphics of mitosis in a row to illustrate the process. Let's start with the prophase. Next is prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and lastly, telophase. Mitosis is usually followed by the division of the cell, called cytokinesis. Two identical daughter cells with diploid sets of chromosomes are developed. Now we've finished our first film. We hope you liked it and learned something today. If you have any questions or concerns, please let us know in the comments. If you liked the video, please click like and subscribe. This will let our boss, Dr. Häusle, know that you enjoyed watching so that he won't fire us poor students. Thank you for watching and see you next time.